नानम परमम धेयम नॉलेज इज सुप्रीम ओके तो इन द लास्ट कपल ऑफ लेक्चर्स वी हैव बीन स्टडिंग नॉर्मल फील्ड एक्सटेंशन एंड सेपरेबल फील्ड एक्सटेंशन before that we have studied galva finite galva extensions and also we have gave, we have given uh, equivalent characterizations of galva extensions and now we will use normal and separable extension to give another characterization of galva extensions so let me begin with the notation so we have been studying field extensions and in this course we have concentrated only on the finite field extensions so let l over k be a finite field extension and let us summarize what we have done so far so we have defined when l over k is galva that was the definition was this was the definition this is when the galva group of l over k has order equal to the degree of the field extension so the galva group is gal l over k this is attached to any field extension finite field extension and this is nothing but the automorphisms of l as k algebras so elements of the galva group are also called symmetries of the field extension so when the number of symmetries equal to the degree of the field extension this is maximum possible because before this we had proved that the order of the galva group is bounded by the degree of the field extension this was the theorem of this we got it uh, using dedic and artin's uh, theorem so that was uh, so the when the galois extension is has a maximum number of symmetries okay so another thing we proved was this was this is even only if this was proved that galois group so the galva group operates on this and the fixed field fix field of the galva group action on l this is precisely the base field k this is so here we have used the fact that galva group of l over k operates naturally on l and we have uh, computed the fixed points of this action and that is precisely the base field then it is a galois extension so that also gave us many examples uh, how to construct galois field extensions and also it gave us um, way to compute the minimal polynomials of the elements minimal polynomials also it gave us way to compute the characteristic polynomials and also it gives us the concepts of norm and trace norms and trace and it allow it also gave us chance to use a linear algebra to study finite field extensions so that was what it now after that we have defined a normal extensions normal field extensions and we have characterized them and uh, the basically the normal field extensions are precisely the splitting fields splitting fields of polynomials finite normal extensions they correspond to the splitting field of polynomials so 
splitting field of a polynomial is you have a polynomial f in the base field then we know by Kronecker's theorem all the zeros of f they lie in the algebraic closure of k this is algebraic closure of k we have proved their existence and also we have proved their uniqueness and then you take the subfield of k bar generated over k by the zeros of this polynomial and these are normal extensions and they have the property that if you call this as L every embedding of L into any algebraically closed field is algebraically closed the sigma sigma of L will be contained in L that is uh, the definition of normality ok so that was normal extension now we came to separable extensions so the most important property of the separable extensions which Galois used in when he developed the theory that if I have a polynomial f kx and I have um, so first of all separable extension means field extension is called separable if every element is separable so separable if every element is separable x in L is separable but that means that is the minimal polynomial of x over k is separable and separable polynomial means that the definition is GCD of mu x and its derivative they are co-prime and this condition is equivalent to saying mu x k has no multiple zeros that means all zeros are simple so that is the separability and then we have the most important fact Galva used was the separable extensions have primitive element separable extensions separable then L is simple L is of the form kx for some x this was the most important this is called primitive element theorem and remember we have also proved a primitive element theorem for Galois extensions so that we approved it very simple by using linear algebra so now I, I want to state a theorem so this is let L over K be a finite field extension then the following statements are equivalent one L over K is a Galois extension with Galois group what K algebras as L this we have denoted by gal L over K 2 the fixed field fix gal L over K L equal to the base field this is a fixed field of the Galois operation Galois group operation on L is precisely the base field third one L over K is normal 
and separable. Uh, note that uh, in earlier course of lectures, we have proved one if and only if two. This was proved earlier. Very beginning of the course when we started, we have proved one if and only if two. And I want to make few comments before I prove the equivalence of one and three or two and three. That uh, normally uh, in the mo in the modern books, uh, third condition is taken as a definition of a Galois field extensions. But in my opinion, uh, it doesn't give a feeling for the subject because uh, if you write right away start directly with the definition of normality and separability one doesn't know where these uh, conditions have come from and how did one think about it. Uh, whereas, uh, if I define uh, Galva extension like I did, it gave a natural feeling and it was indeed what Galva did it and we followed completely historically as it went on. And so now, and this, this will complete now, once we prove this theorem, this will also complete our compatibility with the present day uh, courses. So, therefore, it is necessary to prove this theorem because otherwise we, one might feel that we are different from the world. No, we are not different from the world, but we have changed the order of studying. And that is very important sometimes to study as it happens. So, only now, only to prove one if and only three. One if and only if three. Alright, so first one implies three. One implies three. So I have a Galois extension and I want to prove L over K Galois given and I want to prove it is normal and separable. Remember, uh, we have proved that Galois extensions have primitive roots. So therefore, we know L is K of X for some X. This we have proved earlier. And also we have proved that uh, the simple extension, if it is Galois, then the minimal polynomial mu X K splits into linear factors splits into distinct linear factors in Lx. So, this, this simply means, so in other words that is 1 mu x is separable polynomial and second all roots of mu x they lie in L and this simply means L is a splitting field of of mu x over k but this means it is therefore L is L over k is normal. And this condition 1 means L over K is separable. So, we have proved that if you have a Galois extension, then it is normal and it is also separable. So, that proves 3. Now, 3 implies 1. So, we are assuming L over K is normal and separable. And now I want to prove that uh, L over K is Galois extension. So, to prove L over K is Galois extension, note that we have just couple of lectures, uh, last lectures or couple of lectures back, we have proved that if it is a separable extension, then it has a primitive element. So, L is has a primitive element. And then, because it is normal, we know also uh, it is a splitting field. 
so normal so mu x k this is a minimal polynomial um, has one root in l therefore all roots of minimal polynomial should lie in this so all the roots of this they are contained in l so this means that minimal polynomial x over k splits into distinct because the minimal polynomial is separable because this extension is separable therefore this minimal polynomial mu x k is a separable polynomial therefore mu x splits into distinct linear factors in lx but we know then the, how we have characterized earlier how do you check that a simple extension to be galois so the only way to test is only easy way to test is that look at the minimal polynomial of a primitive element and it should split into distinct linear factors in lx already so this proves l over k is galois this is proved earlier so all together we have finished the proof of this theorem uh, that uh galwa if and only if normal and separable now i want to highlight here two very important points which i want to use in further discussion uh, and we have also used it many times earlier uh, namely the following so this was always we have used so whenever i have an embedding so sigma belong to embedding of k embedding of l into any algebraically closed field e and we have seen that these embedding are independent of this e so i could have simply taken this e equal to algebraic closure of k this is algebraic closure of k which contain so actually easier way to say is this l over k we have a finite extension finite extension and therefore finite therefore algebraic and instead of saying k algebraic closure of k i take the l bar which is algebraic closure of l but this is same thing as k bar because this extension is algebraic this extension is algebraic therefore l bar equal to k bar equal means what isomorphic so a uh, better to better to take an algebraic closure of l bar it will contain l and therefore it will contain k also so therefore one writes equality here so this is algebraic closure of of l and if i have some polynomial f in the ground field coefficients in the ground field and if some zero of that polynomial and if i have any embedding then sigma of x this is an element in l bar but it is also zero of f and f of sigma x is zero this is this fact we have used it many times this is simply because sigma respects addition and multiplication and also the k linearity will tell us this is same thing as sigma of fx but sigma of fx is zero therefore this is zero that is one i i have repeated this many times but more than that now i want to say something better so the remark i want to make is the following one if l over k algebraic extension not only finite but any algebraic algebraic extension and if i have a embedding embedding k embedding of l into l so this is home k algebra from l to l so because l is a field algebraic field extension so l is a field therefore these are these are all these all embeddings are really injective mappings but a priori it is not clear why should they be surjective 
But yes, it is true that I want to prove this equality. In fact, they are surjective also. So they are automorphisms of L as K algebra. This is what we called it a Galva group of L over K. And we are debating why this equality. So I want to prove that given any sigma K embedding, I want to prove it is surjective. Then sigma is surjective. So to prove so, so you are surjective, let y be in L given and what am I looking for? I am looking for x which is going to y under sigma. So I am looking for looking for x in L with sigma of x equal to y. This is what we want to prove. But well, we have given y. So we have given and y is y is in L, y is algebraic over k. Therefore, it has a minimal polynomial mu y k. This is a polynomial in with coefficients in k, and therefore I have the zero set. This zero set. Uh, lies in and I look at the zeros of this minimal polynomial inside L. This is inside L and definitely Y is here. Therefore, this set is non-empty set. This is non-empty set and we have this sigma here L to L and now look at What do we know? This is uh, this zero set of minimal polynomial. This is contained here. I want to restrict the sigma to this zero set. So restriction will map the zero set to inside. That's what we are, our earlier observation says. The zero set goes inside zero set under the embedding. So this goes inside. So I get a map. I denote it by same letter. I have a map on the finite set, same set to same set. Sigma is injective, therefore restriction is also injective and now it is finite set to finite set, same set to same set injective mapping, pigeon hole principle will tell you this is surjective. So therefore, therefore this y is here, therefore it is coming from somebody. So sigma, this map. This map is surjective and y is an element here, therefore it has to come from some x. So there exists x with sigma of x is y, that is what we wanted to prove. So it is very very simple, the only observation is if you apply embedding to a 0 of some polynomial it is a 0 of the same polynomial again. Okay. So that is what this observation I want to use it again and again. Okay. So um, now I want to recall, I have defined it earlier but I want to elaborate on uh, what is a Galois group of a polynomial. So the original problem what Galois was considering was given a polynomial f in kx. So in, in the Galois time the only field was they were considering was Q. So they were not even thinking about finite fields and characteristic positive fields and so on. But anyway we have now uh, developed a theory for arbitrary field and we have a polynomial. Now this polynomial F uh, we have proved that this is uh, uh, polynomial ring is a unique factorization domain. So every polynomial has a unique factorization. So factorization will look like some constant a pi 1 power nu 1 etc etc pi r power nu r where this is a prime factorization.
of f in kx. So, this means this a is a constant f may not be monic. So, I have taken it out that constant is pi 1 to pi r are distinct prime polynomials. Prime polynomials are the monic polynomials which are irreducible. They do not they don't factorize further and this nu 1 to nu r are natural numbers bigger equal to 1. This is a prime factorization. So, if I want to study the zeros of f, I might as well forget this a and also I forget this uh, nu 1 to nu r because the zero set will not change. So, that I consider the red reduction of f. This is by definition pi 1 this distinct product of distinct factors. This is called reduction of the polynomial f. So, instead of studying a 0 set of, so note that 0 set of f and 0 set of reduction of f, they are same, they have not changed. Only the multiplicities have changed, but we are not bothered about multiplicities because our main aim was to find formulas for the zeros of a given polynomial. So, this is we have achieved and now even further, I want to assume that this is this red, we will assume assume that this reduce reduction reduction that I will denote red f of f is separable polynomial. Separable means it has only distinct zeros, but this is equivalent to checking that these prime factors pi 1 to pi r are separable. So, we will assume that so, this we will assume and now I consider the splitting field. So, the splitting field of the reduction. So, that is so the splitting field of f or red f they are the same. So, that I will denote by L. So, this L is nothing but k adjoin all zeros of f and without loss I will assume now f equal to red f. This we will assume. So, I do not have to keep writing red f red f. So, this is a splitting field of f over k and because it is a splitting field it is normal and therefore, it is a normal extension and because the polynomial is separable it is a normal and separable extension. Therefore, L over K is a Galois extension. And in order to get the formulas or not formulas for the roots zeros of F, we have to study this Galois extension more intimately and that is what I will study in this couple of lectures. So, we want to study this Galois extension and this Galois extension I am going to denote um, the Galois group of this, this Galois group I am going to this is the called a Galois group of the polynomial f over k. This only depends on f. So, this is called Galois group of f over k. And uh, I, we will study this Galois group um, carefully, a little bit intimately and I will calculate this Galois group for some specific f in uh, uh, the next half of the, this lecture. So, with this I will stop and we will continue this uh, calculation in the next lecture. Thank you.